Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Devotional Thoughts. It's been a few weeks since I've done one of these. Now that we're uh, we've switched our church around and uh, church schedules and stuff around, and now that we're back uh, in person on Wednesday nights, um, it's uh, a little bit harder for me to find time to record these and, and get them out. I was going to try to do them on Sunday evenings. Uh, but this Sunday evening, uh, when you uh, will be viewing this, is our Vacation Bible School. Um, and so I'll be there this Sunday, and then we also have uh, I've been up, had some family vacations, and then I'll have summer camps and all kinds of other things on Sunday evenings. So um, I'm going to try to keep these going as best I can, as consistently as possible, but uh, especially now that Wednesday evenings are back in person uh, it's going to be, these are not going to be quite as consistent as they were before, but I hope you still tune in uh, and enjoy these services and uh, and really just, uh, especially doing your homework, uh, it's going to be great. So before we move on to our announcements, uh, that brings me up to our homework from the last time we met together, which uh, was a, a few weeks ago, but the homework was to think of a person in your life who you don't get along with or understand very well. And and I know this, okay, that's the easy part. Yeah, sure, I can think of somebody I don't get along with. Great. Well, instead of judging them and thinking of why you don't get along with them or, or why they're wrong and you're right or, or why you don't understand why they just don't do things your way, instead of judging them, the homework was to reach out to them with compassion and try to see them as God does. Maybe Spend some time with them. Maybe call them on the phone. Just, uh, you know, try to see things from their perspective instead of yours. Try to see things from God's perspective instead of yours. So if you did that, I hope it helped. Uh, if you didn't do that last time, you know what? This is a great thing to try to do all the time. So uh, anytime you come across a person who thinks differently than you, does things differently than you, uh, or you just, you know, butt heads with, or just don't, don't see eye to eye with, you know, instead of judging them, which is our natural tendencies to reach out and just say why they're wrong, right? But instead of doing that, uh, reach out to them with compassion instead. See them the way God does as one of his beloved children, right? So that was the homework from a few weeks ago, uh, and really for every day in, in our lives. So, uh, as we move towards our announcements, the first, the best place to get announcements is on our app. So if you don't have the Landmark app yet, please download it. Uh, the best way to get that is to text LFCOG, uh, APP, to 77977. And then you can get a link from PushPay and you can download that app. And that will link you anytime we post a new video uh, to our YouTube page. You can find it from the app. Uh, we can do announcements from the app, not only the announcement slides, but uh, we can do notifications as well. So, uh, for instance, uh, last uh, this past Wednesday was our cookout. So we sent out a notification reminding people that the cookout was happening. So uh, different things like that can come through the app. It's the best way to stay in touch with our church family. All right. So. Uh, keep that in mind if you don't already have that. All right. A few other things that we're still in the middle of is the Mary's Cradle Crib Campaign. This is the 12th annual crib campaign, uh, and it ends on June 30th, so in just a few days. Uh, the goal is $150 per crib. So, again, that doesn't have to be, if you can cover that by yourself, wonderful. If not, any little bit helps towards that. All right, we can get uh, you can send those into the church, you can stick them in the mail. If you're here at church, you can uh, write a check and just write Mary's Cradle in the subject note. Make the checks out to us, Landmark, and we will deposit them and write one big check to Mary's Cradle. Um, and we'll try to get them that money. So, again, or if you have cash, put it in an envelope and say Mary's Cradle. Uh, again, we'll collect that and write them one big check at the end. But uh, Mary's Cradle does amazing things. We've partnered with them a few times before. Uh, if you want more information on that, please find that in the app. All right. Our movie night was scheduled uh, for a few weekends ago, uh, but we have rescheduled it to Saturday, July 17th uh, because uh, we just had some weather and some things happen. So we pushed back movie night. It's still happening. Please invite your friends. 
All right, this is uh, this would be fine and wonderful if it was just landmark people hanging out, but it starts to make a kingdom difference when we invite other people. Okay, people who maybe don't know about landmark, especially people who don't know about Jesus. All right, this is a great opportunity for them to come and be around Christian people in a non-threatening environment and they get to know where our church is. So the next time you say, hey, why don't you come to church with me? They'll already know where it is. All right, so we hope that you invite friends and come out to watch Chicken Little on Saturday, July 17th, and we'll start playing the movie as the sun goes down. All right, and now I previously mentioned this, Vacation Bible School will be happening starting Sunday, June 27th, which is when this video will be going live. So I'll be there. And so if you say, oh, no, there's volunteers, but I missed the first meeting. Well, guess what? We need volunteers all week long. All right. So please, please sign up to help. If you want to come out and help us, uh, please get in touch with my wife, Lauren Valentine, and she will uh, put you to work. I'm sure of it. And one last announcement before we move into our topic of discussion today is the yard sale September it will be September 17th and 18th all right we are collecting things Sue uh, Cahill is already taking calls and traveling and picking up some stuff uh, she's moved a handful of things over the church already so uh, if you have any uh, want if, if you want to help with that if you want to be available to pick up some things I know that we could use help with that uh, if you want just to let Sue know that your neighborhood's doing a yard sale to come and pick up your leftover stuff. Sue uh, would love to know about that as well. So please contact her. Uh, I'm not going to put her information on this video. If you need it and you don't have it, you can call the church and we will get a hold of you. All right. But contact Sue if you want and if you want to help with the yard sale. We need actual people to help run it the when it does happen. And I know September 17th seems like a long way away. It'll be here before we know it. And the, the best way to make sure our something big like our yard sale is successful is to have all this stuff planned out as much as we can ahead of time. So uh, please be available and let Sue know if you can help. Now, uh, because this video is not live, our prayer requests are going to be a little bit different. You can certainly type and share requests on this video, but know that I'm not going to be here watching and monitoring to uh, converse with you. Uh, but you can submit those through the app, uh, actually. There is a, a place for to submit prayer requests on the app if you don't have it. Or you can send them to, you can email them to us at the church. You can send a Facebook message to the church. Or, or, or any way you can share your prayer requests uh, with us. And I have a few uh, I've received uh, at the time of filming that I'll share with you at the end of our time together. All right, so the topic for this evening is communion. Now, this morning at church, um, we decided, uh, or it, we took communion together. It's been a long time since we have done communion together at Landmark, um, and that's uh, a big part of that is my fault. It's just one of those things that's easy to put on the back burner and say, oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll get to it. And then, you know, we don't get to it. So uh, I'm excited and grateful for the opportunity that we have did communion this Sunday morning, June 27th. Uh, we hope you were there for that. Uh, if not, this will be kind of a way for you to connect with us uh, through that. So uh, but. It's, a lot of us, we talk about communion. It's a good thing to remember. It's a good thing to think about. But uh, we forget that it was sometimes that the things we read in Scripture were uh, involving real people who were living real lives. They're, they're not made up. It's not like we're watching a movie or reading a book uh, like a, a work of fiction. These were real people living real lives. And Jesus was, was a real person with real disciples, and they ate real communion and real food and, and walked in real places. And so uh, let's put ourselves in the moment of communion as best we can. Um, and so my question to you, have you ever been hanging out with some friends, enjoying some small talk, maybe the weather, maybe work, maybe family or school or whatever? When suddenly someone says something that totally changes the mood of the conversation, right? Has anyone ever experienced that? 
I know that I have. Uh, sometimes I am the, that person that changes the mood of the conversation. Um, but uh, have you ever been there? Have you ever experienced that? You got, you're got you just hanging out with your friends, enjoying small talk, everyone's happy, and then suddenly somebody says something and the conversation, the tone of, of the whole room just changes. Right? You've experienced that, I'm sure. All right. Now, that's what seems to happen in our scripture passage that we're going to look at from Mark chapter 14. The disciples are with Jesus. They're eating a meal and they're enjoying each other's company. They're talking about you know, life and what we're going to do tomorrow and all that stuff. When Jesus changes the mood and the atmosphere of the conversation as he starts breaking bread and he shares a cup of wine. This is what Mark records as happening. It says, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice for many. Now, that is a drastic mood shift, right? They're all enjoying each other's company. They're getting ready to celebrate the Passover meal, which uh, was a traditional thing for the, for the, the Jewish people. And so this is not exactly on, it's kind of a special meal, but not, uh, you know, at this point, many of them have experienced this for years and years and years. So, uh, you know, they're just relaxing and enjoying each other. And all of a sudden, you know, and it says they've already eaten, right? We we look at this uh, in, in verse uh, 22. It, it tells us this. I'm sorry if I can get there. He says, right, as they were eating. Jesus took some bread. It's, this is not how they opened the meal. They were already eating, and at some point in the middle of the meal, Jesus does this. He he takes he grabs a a little loaf of bread that nobody's had yet, right? And he breaks it into tiny little pieces and says, "Look, this is my body." Now that's a weird conversation, and so the disciples are like, "I'm sure they've tuned in. The conversation has shifted." He's like, "This is my body," right? And then he takes a cup of wine. Maybe it's his cup. Maybe it's somebody else's. Maybe it's an empty one sitting there at the table. And he holds it up and he, he passes it around. It's like, everybody drink out of this cup. And then he says, look, this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It's poured out as a sacrifice for many, right? Jesus has changed the mood. Look, my body is going to be broken for you. My blood is going to be poured out for you. Now, that would change the mood, wouldn't it? Certainly does to me. So the thing is, right, we practice communion not just as an empty um, tradition, not just as a time to get a little tiny cracker and a little sip of grape juice and and move on, but we practice communion in the Christian church today as an act of remembering Jesus' sacrifice of, well, remembering the Last Supper, and, uh, you know, therefore, uh, ultimately remembering Jesus' sacrifice of body and blood. The purpose of remembering is reflection and thankfulness. Communion should cause us to pause and reflect on why we follow Jesus and why we give our lives to bring his kingdom to earth. We remember together and we offer thankfulness together. The communion should change the mood when it's time to do that. Just as Jesus' conversation changed, a lot, changed the mood, the atmosphere, the tone, uh, for the disciples, anytime we take communion in the church today, there should be a very tangible shift in the mood, uh, right? It should be a little bit more solemn, 
Uh, we should remember. We're remembering that Jesus was a real man, a real and, and the Son of God, but also a real person. He walked this earth, and he was beaten for us, and he bled for us, and he carried the cross for us, and he was crucified and died for us. And that should be a little bit somber and a little bit solemn. Now, we also recognize that Jesus rose again from the dead, right? He didn't stay there. He didn't stay in the grave. He rose again for our salvation. He defeated sin and death in the grave so that we could have the opportunity to defeat sin and death in our own lives. And that is worth celebrating, too. But in the moment we take communion, we remember that there was a price to pay for that. And Jesus signed up to do so with his body and his blood. And so we remember because it helps us stay humble, it helps us stay grateful, and it helps us remember that we were bought with the price. Our freedom was paid for. And so that moves us into our homework this time. And the homework for this is whenever you take communion again, uh, whether that, and, and maybe I'll release this video a little bit earlier than Sunday evening, uh, and so maybe you can watch this before you take communion with us. Uh, but the next time you take communion, whenever it may be, imagine that you're sitting at the table with the disciples, and you're hearing Jesus speak these words to you. Just imagine that. Put yourself there. Put yourself at the table. Imagine that you're sitting and talking with the disciples about the things that you've done today and what you plan on doing tomorrow, uh, how hot it is, whatever the case may be, right? And then you, you, Jesus starts speaking, and you stop and you listen because he's talking to you. Allow these words whatever communion scriptures you use, but allow them to be fresh and new in your mind. Let the beauty of his promise and his sacrifice fill you with gratitude that impacts how you live every other day. And that's really one of the big deals about communion. It fills us with thankfulness and gratitude. We didn't earn our salvation. Jesus bought it for us. That should affect how we live. That should affect how we look at people. Just like we talked about uh, at the beginning of our time together, our homework from last session, right? The people we don't see eye to eye with, people we don't get along with or understand, we need to see them the way Jesus does. Well, that comes from a place of humility and recognizing that Jesus saw fit, saw us, and decided that we were fit enough for him to die for. We were valuable enough for him to, sh to break his body and shed his blood. And so when we see other people, we should remember, not just on communion days, but we should remember what he did, not just for us, but the fact is he did it for them too. And that should change how we live every day, right? And so that's our homework. Think about that. Think about communion. Put yourself at the table with the disciples. Allow those words to come over you and be fresh and be new and allow them to, to change you, how you live. I pray that that would be what happens for, for you and for me. And that brings us our time here almost to a close as we come with prayer requests. We have a few that I bring uh, to this recording, um, and you may have plenty uh on your hearts and minds. At the time of recording, I've had to go to the hospital. This week is my uh, turn as the chaplain for the hospital here, and so I have a few prayer requests I'm bringing from there, as well as some from our church family. So would you pray, uh, pray together with me tonight? God, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us on the cross. We thank you for uh, taking the last uh, the Passover meal and switching it to the Last Supper or communion as we take it. We thank you for paying the price for us uh, to, to, to buy a way for us to be clean before the eyes of God. We ask you to give us your spirit to help us remember how much you love us 
and how much you love every person we come in contact with. God, we pray that, that communion doesn't just make us quiet for a few minutes in church, but that it changes the way we see the world around us. God, we lift up some prayer requests. We pray for Buck Trail, uh, for his eyes, that you would uh, just keep him, uh, God, keep him moving forward in his healing. God, we pray that you'd give the, the doctors the, the wisdom and insight they need to figure out what is wrong with his eyes and, and what treatment options he has. Uh, God, we pray for uh, Angela Grogan as she has some back issues and, and some, we pray for Mita Holbrook as she has some issues with her right side. Uh, we want to pray for a friend of, of Sandy Trail. Um, she texted me uh, with a prayer request for a young lady passed away from a drug overdose. So we pray for that girl's family. We pray for the, the Whitaker family uh, as, as they are going through some things with some family members in the hospital. Uh, we pray for Sylvia Wright and her family at the, the passing of her mom this earlier this week and so god we we know people who are facing difficult times people who are facing loss who are taking steps forward we remember christina cartwright and her family at the loss of her mom patty just a few weeks ago god there's a lot of of hurt and pain but because of what jesus did we can take that directly to you and so we ask, God, that your arms of love and peace and grace would wrap around us and comfort us and guide us as we step forward. Uh, not only us, but for all those who are hurting, we pray that they would hear from you, either through another person or through the Holy Spirit or, or speak through the scriptures. Uh, God, that all the hurting in the world would know that it doesn't have to be that way. There's a God who loves them, who can walk with them, who can make the hurts hurt a little less. God, we thank you for the opportunity we have. The fact that we can even pray to you is a gift in, it, in and of itself. Uh, we thank you for this time and the technology that allows us to do this. We thank you for communion. What a great gift, the ability to remember. God, we love you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching this. Uh, thank you for praying with us. Uh, again, if there's anything you need, you can find us online on the app. You can view all of these videos and so many more on Facebook or on our YouTube page that you can find uh, see on your screen right now. Have a great week. See you soon.